Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture on the CSR NET June 2019. Today we will discuss about the integral equation questions which is related to the part B and C with the help of this shortcut bridge. Myself Dr. Ghar, working in the School of Mathematics Thapar Institute. You can simply follow this link for finding the various videos with the help of the CSR NET help uh, with the shortcut bridge. Let's start with this first question is there which is related to the part B. So only the one correct answer is there. Uh, what is given to you this the integral equation is given to you and if you look about the options are there something is talking about the y y y and y so it means we have to firstly find the solution of this problem so how you can solve this problem so there are the two methods are there clearly says that the first method you can use about the laplace transformation second method you can use them to the differential equation so how you can use the laplace transformation i can write like this way since this the convolutions are there so i can write this is 1 by s laplace of dt of laplace of y which is what is the one is laplace of the here so what is the meaning of that laplace of y will be common what is the laplace of dt this is nothing but my 1 by s square so it is my 1 by s cube now what is the laplace of y will be my s square upon s square minus 1 so you can find the value of the l inverse directly from here this is s cube so that is s square upon s cube minus 1 after finding this you will get the value of y another way what is another method is you can start with a differential equation what is that i can write this value as of this x minus of t y of here now if you need if you want to solve the differential equation then you need some initial condition also clearly says that what is the value of the y of 0 that is when x is 0 when x is 0 this is a limit 0 to 0 the value is my 1 now you can find the differential equation so take the partial derivative with respect to x this will be 0 how you take the partial derivative that is a partial with respect to x it will be my 0 to x of y t of dt plus when you take the x minus x of this into 1 Minus of zero is there. So what is the partial? What is the first derivative? Is my here. Again, you can see that the y dash zero. When you take x is zero, it will be zero. Now again, you can take the partial. Again, you can take the derivative. It will be my nothing but y of t. So what is the meaning of that? This will be nothing but y dash minus y is zero. What is the solution of this? It is nothing but my c one e raised to power x c two. e raised to power minus x now since it is a function of the t so i can written as in terms of the t r there so that is c1 e raised to power t plus of uh, this so since it is a derivative with respect to sorry it's again a function of the x only why because it's a derivative with respect to x so it is a c1 c2 e raised to power x now we can apply the first condition y of 0 is 1 it means c1 plus c2 is my 1 and second derivative will be zero so it means c1 minus c2 is zero so you can clearly say that if you solve them c1 plus c1 and c2 both are one therefore what is your y e raised to power x e raised to power minus x over 2 now once you know the value of y now we can uh, take about the answer first of all y is a periodic this is option is cancel why because this is a non periodic what is that this is nothing but my cos hyperbolic x cos hyperbolic is a non periodic function if you look for that if you draw the graph when x is 0 it values 1 and you can see this is a symmetric with respect to x so the graph will be here now clearly says that this is my feasible area what is a feasible area is there you can see this is my unbounded fine so once it is unbounded so y is bounded that also cancel periodic is also cancel out how you can do this third part is there integration of the r integration of this y over the r r means that is minus infinity 2 plus infinity what is the answer of this you can clearly say that what is the integration of the cos hyperbolic that is nothing but my sin hyperbolic once you take from minus infinity to plus infinity it is my infinity so but it is said it's a finite this option also cancel out the only option is my 4 is the pending so that is the right answer but if you want to calculate the uh, if you want to check whether it's a right answer or not you have to do like this way upon y so what is that y can be either a cos or you can write like of this e upon 2x plus of this 
Now clearly say that it is over the R minus infinity to plus infinity. So it can be written as e raised to the power 2x plus 1 of dx. Now clearly say that what is the integration of this? If you take this as a y, so this will be nothing but my 2y upon y square plus 1 of dy. Now it's nothing but the log of this. So log of y square plus 1 or log of e raised to the power 2x plus 1 over this. Uh, limits are there. So now clearly say that this will be my finite answer. So the right answer is my 4 is the correct answer. Sorry, this is the uh, this is not the y. So what is the what is the answer of this? This is nothing but my tan inverse y over the minus infinity to plus infinity. So it will be my pi by 4 pi, sorry pi by 2 plus pi by 2. You can see that its answer is pi 2 pi which is a less than of infinity so the right answer is fourth look what the another one is there so again uh, this is the integral equation and you are talking about the function f f and f it means our target is to firstly find the value of f from here again it's a very simple we can firstly write the value of this plus since it is the integration with respect to the t so this part is my constant i can write this value as outside and i can write this value as a c where c is my from minus 1 to plus 1 e raised to power t phi of t this is the way we can solve the integral equation now i can substitute the value of phi t here what is that this is e raised to power t this is f of t plus e t upon 2 of c over the integration dt now how you can solve that this is nothing but e of t f of t of now this is the integration with respect to the t so e c upon 2 is common from 1 to minus 1 t of this now what is the answer of this so this part i can write this as such f of t plus e c upon 2 what is the integration of this this is nothing but my here over the limit minus 1 to plus 1 so this is as such plus e c upon 2 when you take 1 it's a 0 minus minus of 2 e raised to power minus 1 so what is that 2 will be cancelled out e raised to power minus 1 will be cancelled out it's a c left hand side is e and here so what is the meaning of that c and c will be cancelled out so therefore what is the conclusion about that here this is the result now we can check about the options from this let's start from the fourth one so when you take f of x is here, what is the integration of this? Over 1 to minus 1, x, plus, x is nothing but my t plus t cube plus t5 of dt. Now clearly say that it's an odd function, so the integration from minus 1 to 1 is 0. This is 0, this is 0, so the answer is my 0. So is f of x is a solution? Since it's satisfied, yes, it's a solution. Look about this third option. So if I uh, clear this up to here now what is the sec third option is if i take f of x is there then we can substitute this value e raised to power t e raised to power minus t of 1 plus here what is the answer of this 1 minus 3 t square so it's a t minus of t q 1 of minus 1 to plus 1 so clearly say that it's a 1 minus 1 and minus 1 minus plus 1 it's a 0 again it's a satisfied it's a solution how you can check about the first and the second part what is the first part said that there exists a fun function from minus 1 to 1 to open interval g there now that's a very simple here here the f, there is a continuous function look about that the domain is minus 1 to 1 that's true so if you take any of the x from the domain what is the answer of this since it is a open interval so the function is always be greater than 0 now once f of t is always be greater than 0 we all know that e of t is always be greater than 0 so it means this portion is always be greater than 0 now what is the result is that you all know that if f is greater than 0 on the closed interval a comma b then its integration is always be greater than 0 so it means the integration of the domain minus 1 to plus 1 of this function is always be greater than 0 but we need a equality 0 it means this option not satisfied 
similarly for the sec second part its number is minus infinity to 0 means it means if f is less than 0 on the interval a comma b then we all know that integration of the f over the domain a to b is less than 0 fine now here in the second cost in the second part f is my less than 0 e of t is always positive so what is the product of them this is a less than 0 and once you take the integration from this it is always less than 0 but again we need a equality so it means this second option is also cancel out the right answer is my third and fourth are the correct option so this is the way you always try to solve this integral equation in a simple manner if you want to find some other videos related to my previous lecture csnet 1920 as well as 22 you can simply follow the playlist name csnet gate channel name dr harishkar where you can find the various videos related to the real analysis complex and many more are there. You can see linear algebra integral equation of 19 years and many more. I hope you can simply learn the concept behind that. You can simply like, share and comment this video. Best of luck students. Happy.